Well, good afternoon, YouTube. This is Chuck, and it's Monday, June 17th, 2024, about 2.30 in the afternoon, and I'm coming to you from the recording studio slash van, and this poor thing's been sitting here for so long, and I haven't been driving it, and it's all dirty and all messy, but the wind's blowing a little bit today, so hopefully uh, we won't get any wind noise in here. I hope the light's right. The last video I shot, it was a little bit later in the day, and I got a little too much reflection. But anyway, uh, boy, do I have some stuff for you today. And it might be a good time to sit down and buckle your seatbelt. This is going to be some a Bigfoot update. and I've got some stories from some of my people, and then i got a bunch of pictures from, Al from Alabama Al. And, uh, boy, some stuff happened over the weekend. It's pretty amazing. So this is going to be one where I insert a bunch of pictures. And I think i got a total of nine pictures I'm going to show you this uh, before we're done here. But I'm going to break it up into groups. But first, uh, before I... Let me, uh, let me give you an update from my friend up in Utah. And got a couple interesting things up there. And remember a while back, you know, his wife is one quarter Native American and and uh, she seems to have the gift of communication with uh, the Sasquatch people. And well, a while back, you know, I told you about a raven that was kind of hanging around and they indicated that the raven was, was one of them. And we're not sure exactly what, uh, you know, whether that meant that they, they shapeshifted into the raven or whether they were remote pilot or piloting the raven somehow, or like I like to say, flying it like a Cessna uh, or what the deal might be. but. The, uh, my friends noticed some, a bird hanging around his house, and it was a little sparrow bird, and it was sitting on his windowsill, staring in his window, and it was the only one there, and it stood there for the longest time looking at him through the window, and he said he almost felt like he was getting a little bit of a tingle, so then the other night when they were up at their spot up there, they had a robin, and the robin was kind of almost hopping along the ground along with them when they were there, so his wife asked, and, you know, and, was that is that sparrow one of you yes well what about the robin was the robin one of you yes well then it, they said something else too that was kind of interesting they said something to the effect that the the children were playing well does that mean that their young ones are able to do that and they they do that as part of their playing you know, that's what they said, so that's um, that's what I'm bringing you. So take it for what you will, or you know, but uh, I think it's uh, it's pretty interesting at any rate. The other thing that happened up there is, uh, you know, I told you the other day about an, another guy up in Utah, and he's he's about an hour north of my friend, is, and uh, the one that uh, ran into what we thought was probably a cloaked Sasquatch with his motorcycle was seriously injured. Well, in talking to the two of them, uh, the uh, they decided they decided they'd get together. So I gave I gave uh, I gave the guy the other guy's phone number and anyway they spent quite a bit of time over the weekend on the phone talking to each other and I think the plan is that they're going to get together and have coffee or lunch or something and my friend from Utah said he'd be happy to drive up there and visit with his other guy and so uh, we'll see where that where that goes. That's kind of interesting in itself and they're both interested in the same subject matter. Anyway, that's that's my report out of Utah. The other thing that happened was is um, I had a uh, somebody from the Seattle, Washington area reach out to me, and so I ended up uh, on the phone talking to this lady, and her husband has uh, ongoing communication with two Sasquatches that live uh, somewhere in her neighborhood, a couple couple male Sasquatches, and just uh, in out there communicating with them, and he uh, after watching some of my videos, he actually just ask them if they knew me and uh, they came back and they acknowledged that they did and they referred to me as one of the openers now I hadn't heard that term before openers I'm not quite sure what that means and we're going to try to next time we get somebody talking to us we're going to try to figure out what that term means but anyway they uh, here up in the Seattle area they acknowledged that they knew who I was and they referred to me as one of the openers well, that, it tells me, that tells me a couple things. For, uh, it tells me there's more than one of us because I'm one of the openers. So isn't that weird? I mean, that's just, that's amazing. And not too long ago, I had a lady in Florida that said they knew me and now in Washington. And that just confirms what we think that they, for some reason, we don't know how it works, but for some reason they, 
as we say, what one knows, they all know, and they, they have some kind of a, you know, who knows how in the world they do it. It's probably something beyond our comprehension. So anyway, let's uh, let's get into Al, Alabama Al. Now, Al, of course, he's a working man. He works during the week. And so this last weekend, one of the things I'd ask him to do is I'd ask him to go over where, the spot where he found that 10-foot section of tree trunk missing and take a picture of it. And uh, and then so we could compare like a, a when it's there and when it's not kind of thing. So he said, yeah, you can go do that. Well, that was in a little section of woods, not too far from his house. And so he went over there looking for that. And a couple of things. Number one is he couldn't find that spot again. He could not, he could, he, he said he took quite a few pictures that day. And, and uh, that was the one that jumped out at him. But he, he was having trouble finding that spot. He said just the area looked different to him. And so we don't necessarily know what that means. But he said while he was over there, he said he got, he got majorly creeped out. And so he started taking pictures. And... The first picture I'm going to show you uh, is uh, he said he saw one spot. He he saw what he thought was faces in a tree, and there was three of them. And now I've done that myself. I've sat in the woods a lot and, you know, let my mind wander and s stared at the bark of the tree. And if you look long enough, you can see faces and figures and stuff in the bark of the tree. And I've taken several pictures like that. And. And I think, you know, if you see one face, well, you can easily chalk that up to pareidolia. And pareidolia, if you, that's, a, that's the thing where uh, somebody sees, you know, the face of the Virgin Mary and a piece of toast or something like that. And, and it's easy looking at the rough bark on a ponderosa pine. It's pretty easy to see just about anything you want to in there if you stare at it long enough. Well, that's easy to write that off if there's one face. But he had a tree over there where he saw three distinct faces in the tree. So the first picture I'm going to show you is the general area with an arrow showing where that particular tree is. And then I'm going to show you a close-up of the tree with arrows showing where the faces are. And you can make up your own mind as to what you're seeing there. But the one thing that he saw is he said that the, there were no other trees that showed that. And that tree, especially the center face, had a real bright area in the tree. And he says it wasn't the sun shining on it. He said just for some, it was, he said it almost, it almost looked like it was glowing where that center face was. And uh, but he got it on the, on the picture, and it's uh, you know you can here again you can take a look at it and see what you think. The next picture I'm going to show you uh, is another little critter that uh, that he took a picture and it's looking out next to a tree, and I'll circle it so you can see it. But uh, it's got a you can, it's got a big old nose on it, and almost uh, the first thing I thought of was a koala bear. And it's kind of looking around behind the tree. And if you zoom in on it and look at it, you can see the nose, you can see the eyes, you can even see the nostrils. Uh, do I know what it is? I have no idea what it is, but it's got a big schnoz. And uh, so I'll show you that picture. Okay, then the picture number four is going to be, uh, Al had feeling he's being watched. And so he kind of took his camera and turned the, turned the video on his camera and he was kind of shooting around behind him. Trying to see if he could catch anything behind him, and uh, the one little, the one picture he got, and I did blow it up a little bit, but you can see the play button in the middle, and just right, kind of above and to one side of the play button a little bit. And it's like, looks like a little critter down there, peeking at him out of the brush, and I'll circle that for you. So that's the first four pictures. Okay, I'm going to put them in right here. Okay, did you see those four? All right, now let me let me tell you about the next bunch. The next bunch, uh, the one was actually taken a few days ago, 
and it shows an old uh, like an old tent trailer that's sitting out there and you can see a dark figure kind of looking out from behind the corner of the tent trailer i put an arrow on it for you so you can see that well we sent that picture and the, the last series we sent i sent two pictures up to a friend up in canada and she's been having some pretty good luck enhancing some stuff and so she took a look at those pictures and uh, i've actually got them in reverse order the the second one she enhanced is the first one i'm going to show you but it's that uh, it zoomed in on that uh, corner of that tent trailer and she not only saw the could see the thing that it's a kind of a dog looking figure that i saw but when she zoomed in on it uh, in the background, you can see a pretty clear face. It looks like a large male Sasquatch with a bushy beard. And so I put arrows on both of those two for you, too. Then the last th series is three. And the first of the three is kind of the woodsy area with an arrow on the left side showing where we zoomed in at. And, there, and uh, Al could see something over there, and he couldn't really tell what it was. So the second picture of that series is zoomed in on that spot. And uh, you can see what almost looks kind of like a, to me, it looked kind of a canine face uh, there. And it looked like it was cloaked. It's kind of fuzzy and kind of blurry, but you, you can still see it. And uh, I got, I actually bracketed that with two arrows so that you can see where that's at. Well, I sent that up to my friend in Canada and she clear, cleared it up and zoomed in on it and everything. And she said what she saw was like a collection of faces. And so the last picture that I'll show you uh, is the one she sent back. And one of the faces looks kind of almost human, although it's got buck teeth. And then the other face on the other side looks like a small dog. And... What she saw, was, she said, was kind of like a collection of faces that made up this thing that looked like a big face. I have absolutely no idea what to make of that. That is really strange for me. So I'll pass it on to you guys, and you guys can make your own determination on it. So I'm going to plug those pictures in right here. Okay, you see that? Of course, you can always, you know, back up and take screen grabs and pause and do anything you want to on any of those pictures. Uh, Alabama Al is gracious enough to tell me I can use any of them, and I used one in my community page this morning of a little critter that you could see. And if the ears were a little different, it almost looked like flapjack back there, but it looked like it was about maybe six feet off the ground, and I don't know how it would have got up there. Somebody might ask if that was a slope or not. It's not. It's flat ground, so the um, it wasn't something sitting up on a slope. So, but anyway, uh, that kind of that'll give you plenty to look at for this stuff that happened over the weekend. And you know, do I have answers for it? No, I don't have answers for it. It's just uh, it's just pretty amazing. The that one uh, dog-looking figure, and we've seen there's some other pictures as well that you can see that dog-looking figure in it, and uh, the. Al is kind of under the impression, and I am too, that it's the same one and that he's photographed it in several different settings. And uh, so we don't know whether, you know, is that a dog man? I don't know. It uh, definitely kind of has a canine look to it, and you can tell by the ears, and you can, it looks like it has a canine type snout. Now, none of the pictures are super, super clear, but some of them are not bad. 
So I'll let you draw your own conclusions on what you're looking at. I'll present them as I see it. And uh, boy, this has been a long video. It's going to take me a while to chop it up and insert those pictures and all that kind of stuff to get it up and uploaded for you. So I think for right now, the best thing I can do is, as I always do, and tell you to take care of each other and love each other and understand there's a whole bunch out there that we don't understand. And the crazy train just keeps on a chugging and it's getting weirder and weirder. So until I talk to you again, I guess there's really nothing more to do than to just say peace out.